start from chapter 1 and uh, chapter 1 verse 1 to verse 7 and from there we are going to just touch on Isaiah the prophet Isaiah a very favorite prophet of mine him and Jeremiah I found myself loving them so much <clears throat> so Paul an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God in keeping with the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. Listen, listen to that introduction, how he introduces himself. Okay, let's go. So, to Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve as my ancestors did with a clear conscience as a night and day I constantly remember you in my prayer. That's a very strong relationship between the father and the son. Okay, let's go. So, recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. That's a good son. I am remembered of your sincere faith. So he remembers something about him. Not the look, not the talk, but the sincere faith. Which first lived in your grandmother, Louis, or Lois, and in your mother, is it Eunice? Eunice. And I am persuaded now lives in you also. So I am persuaded that this DNA is also in you. So, so there is a, a root. We can trace your salvation. We can trace your love and your passion for God somewhere. It must come from somewhere. Touch your neighbor say it came from somewhere. Mm, somebody somewhere prayed for me. Yeah, yeah, somebody prayed for me. I didn't lock up here. Uh, somebody prayed me into this church. Amen. For this reason, am I ready? For this reason, I remind you to fan into frame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. I know you have faith, but Above that faith, there is also a gift that I gave you. And do you know how I did it? By the mercies and the grace of God, I laid hands upon you. So my hand, God used it to impart to you things of spirituality. So he says, now, I need you to stir it up. I need you to frame it. So I've, I've given you the gift but I can't do anything else about it. You, you, you have the responsibility to frame it into fire. Hallelujah. You have got the responsibility to... I've given you charcoals, but charcoals can be turned into fire. You know, I've given you a seed, but seed can be turned into a tree, into fruit. So I've given you something of virtue, of power. Then he says... For the spirit God gave us does not make us Timothy, but gives us, but gave us rather, power, love, and self, self-discipline. God gave us this kind of gift. Can you give me the version that says, please, I think it would be maybe NIV. For God have not given us the spirit of fear. Please. In NKJV, New King James, Thank you so much. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. Yes, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Sound mind. A mind that makes sense. A mind that draws attention. That a mind that can be listened to. Amen. Isaiah uh, 41 verse 10 before we sit please in the same version I would appreciate it 
the one we just read the last? Thank you. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I am your God. Don't, don't, don't be discouraged. I will strengthen you. I have the job to strengthen you. It's my job, not yours. I will know. I will strengthen you. I want you not to fear because I am your God. And guess what? I'm going to strengthen you. I'm going to empower you. Yes, I will help you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you have dreams. I know you have purpose. I know you have destiny. Don't worry. I got your back. I'm going to help you. We're going to do this together. Hallelujah. Can somebody say a big amen? amen? And it says, I will uphold you with my righteous hand. I can't trust my left hand. So I'm going to hold you with my righteous hand. And there, I have a guarantee that I can keep you, protect you, and get you to where you need to be. Amen. Uh, I want to talk to you this morning um, on a subject that I have entitled, Get a Read of Fear. Get rid of fear. Get it out. Get it out of your way. Get a read of fear. Amen. Father, we are standing in your presence on the altar of our Father, whom you have trusted as the guardian and the custodian of our souls this morning under his anointing, under his grace, his vision. I submit myself to you that you may use me as a vessel as a vessel to deliver what you have for your people, the message that you have given me to empower them that our lives may never be the same after today. And we ask this in no any other name but the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the church say, Amen. You may have your seat, please. Thank you so much. So, this is going to be very interesting. If you can hear me say, Amen. That amen make me suspect you. Listen to me. I'm still suspicious. I've got problems this morning. I'm very suspicious. So you got to pray for me where you are sitting there. The message I have for you is too big. The, it's not easy. We, we cannot get you standing on our father's altar. So you got to pray for me this morning. And I want to appreciate him one more time for seeing it befit that God through him allows him that I may stand before his altar this morning to speak to you, my brothers and sisters. So I'm very humbled. And to my father, thank you so much. And um, I appreciate and salute you. And I think he knows that, that I do. <laughs> Amen. Can we go to work now? So now, it, it, it's very interesting because many theologians believe that the book of Timothy was not supposed to be included in the Bible. And the reason why, it's because it was a letter from a father to a son. And, and if it's then written to a congregation, it means that we have to understand that there is what we call spiritual cords that you have to uncord. There are passwords that you have to go through to put into this chapter or into the book of Timothy to Paul for, or Paul to Timothy in order for you to get a message that is relevant for you and me in our times. Because he speaks to him as a father and a son who have a relationship with each other and understands each other's language. So if we need to understand their language, we are expected to understand the cords in their language, in their relationship, so that we can be beneficially of the chapters. And in this chapter, he begins explaining to him and reminding him the calling of God upon him. He reminds him, in the first chapter, he gives him responsibility, or in the first letter, rather, he reminds him about, he guides him through ministries, how to pastor the church, how to appoint leaders, how to guide leaders, how to serve in the church, how to appoint leaders. When we come to the second letter, he reminds him of his gift. 
He reminds him that you were called, you were purposed, you were intentionally called by God. And he reminds him that the seed of faith in him has generations that it originates from. It's sometimes difficult to walk with the calling that you cannot trace in someone close to you. It's sometimes not easy to grow into a gift, to grow into a minister, a preacher, if you have no source or genealogy that you can trace because you are traveling into a journey that you have never seen anybody travel before. It's not the same when you are moving into a journey that somebody have went through before because they pave a way for you so you don't have to go through what they have went through. That is the beauty of having people in your life who are anointed, who are, who are gifted, who are called. Because at least they create a standard of your faith. It, we are blessed to have anointed father, to have anointed mother. Because through their serving and through their gifting, through their anointing and the oil that melts over their heads, we can see it and we can desire it. And therefore we are moving into a road that has has been paved before us. Somebody say amen. So then he writes to him and reminds him that listen, you've got a gift you were laid hands upon and, and when I laid my hands upon you, you were no longer ordinary. Your faith now has a gift. You see, you had faith but you had no gift. You see, this is not a natural gift that you can be born with. This is not a natural gift that you can pick on the street. These are divine spiritual gifts, the callings of God. He says, I also laid my hand upon you and you received the gift of God. You received something divine. And then he says, but you need to know that you have to frame it so it can be changed into fire. So you can have a gift and be ordinary unless it is a friend. So Paul identifies his responsibilities and obligation to Timothy, but he also reminds Timothy that Timothy, unfortunately, it's your responsibility to frame this gift. Touch your neighbor, so you have to frame it. If you don't frame it, it's going to be there, but it will be dry. It will be like charcoals without fire. It will have no effect. Nobody will see it. It will not enlighten anybody. It will not have any effect. It is there, but it's not fruitful. It is not useful because you are not framing it. Start your never say, frame this thing. You got to frame it so that it can reach the nation. You have to frame it so that it can change your nation. It can change your family. It can change your community. You have to frame it because if you don't frame it, nobody will trace it in your time. We can trace it in your grandmother. We can trace it in your mother. But if we need to trace it in you, you have the responsibility to frame it. Touch and never say, frame this thing. Then he moved to verse 7, which I'm not going to touch in the totality because it's heavy. He says to him that, but be careful because God has not given us the spirit of fear. God did not. Timothy, listen to me. God has not given us the spirit of fear. God did not give us this fear. He did not give us the spirit of fear. He gave us the spirit of power, of love, and of sound mind. That's what he gave us. In another word, he is saying, fear is a killer of gift. He's saying that if you don't get rid of fear, you will not see the power and the love and the self-control that I have given you that will help you to frame your gift. He says, in order for you to see the power, to see the love, to see the honor, you have to get rid of Do you 
want to see that result? Get rid of fear. So then it means that fear is a spirit. God says fear is a spirit. This is God speaking. He says God did not give us the spirit of fear. This means that fear is a spirit. Fear is what? Uh, talk to me like you are in the church this morning. If we don't know what we're dealing with, we can't get rid of it. Fear is a spirit. He says, God has not given us a spirit of fear. So fear can be given to somebody. Fear can be given to somebody. And the giver of fear is not from God. Which means God is not the source that gives fear. But the Bible is saying that God has not given us the spirit of fear. Because fear also can be given as a gift. Fear can be given as what? As a gift. But it's not God giving this gift. So I had to dig deeper to understand fear now. Because I'm concerned that I can have it as a gift. But I have not received it from God. If I'm talking sense, say amen please. So then, fear is a spirit. Which means fear is like a wind. You cannot see fear, but you can see its results. You can see the results and the outcome of fear. And God, as I was meditating, said to me, Son... One of the most powerful and dangerous weapon that the enemy uses from generation to generation is fear. One of the most powerful weapon that the only enemy uses to attack anybody is fear. Why? Because people don't see fear coming. You can have fear and not know that you have it. Because you can be in denial about it. You can have fear and not know that you have it. It is a very powerful weapon that the enemy uses. And as you know, I begin to do some reading to understand. The way the fear is written 360 times, 365 times in the Bible. Which means there is a spirit of fear on a daily basis to deal with let me say it again. Which means that there is a spirit of fear that you and me have to deal with on a daily basis. Every day. So there is no day where there is no spirit of fear moving around. And if we don't know it, we cannot deal with it. Now, if you know fear have a lot of consequences I said to you that you will see the result of fear but you won't see it coming you only see it fruit on the body now when I did the research I discovered quite a lot of things that happens into a life of a person in the presence of fear I'm going to give you a list of you number one fear brings anxiety Anxiety disorder is a result of fear. So, people may say, oh, you are anxious. Oh, shame. No, you are not anxious. You are attacked by fear. You've been given a spirit of fear. Anxiety, if anxiety is not treated on its own, it develops into depression. If anxiety is not managed or controlled and, or dealt with, if you don't deal with it, it will bring depression. We all know that a depression, if you don't treat it, or if you don't deal with it, 
it results in what we call acute psychosis. Acute psychosis, which means that like now the Kirimora is on the top of the fridge threat. The Kirimora is right upstairs on the top. It's no longer on, it's on the top of the fridge. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? So untreated depression develops into acute psychosis. If psychosis, it means that you have lost your, now on the top. Remember Kirimora is on the top now. So if untreated acute psychosis develops into what you call schizophrenia. Schizophrenia, it means you are gone. You are now no longer operating in the realm of the living normal. <laughs> if you do you understand? This is the fear. Just fear brings anxiety. Anxiety leads to depression. Depression leads into acute psychosis. If acute psychosis is not treated, you will end up in a fucking bag. Schizophrenic. <laughs> Touch your neighbor, say, be away and deal with it now. Now, can I go deeper here? I also discovered that fear can prolong menstrual periods. So, to, it does two things. Fear has two effects on a woman. One, it can make you to have a prolonged period. What you're supposed to go through for five days when it's three weeks to four weeks. Because of what? Fear. Second effect that it will have on women, and I can prove it in the Bible from Genesis, is that fear will also prevent you from conceiving. Fear, fear is a spirit that birds barrenness. Fear is a spirit that birds barrenness. Fear gives birth to barrenness. Or the fruit of fear, it's a barrenness. So you cannot conceive because you have fear. You can't carry a child because you are afraid. You are afraid of what the doctors have said. Or you are afraid of the circumstances around you. And as a result, your womb cannot bear fruits because of fear. Fear also leads to constipation. If you are a person that is usually afraid, anxious, and depressed, don't ask yourself, why don't I go to the toilet anymore? Why? No, forget. It's because you are constipated. And even when you go to the loo, you are fighting with the bathroom. You are fighting there. You are fighting with the walls around you. You are fighting with everything. Because it's a war. Touch your neighbor say, get rid of it. Deal with it. Fear is a very powerful weapon that the church need to be about know about. Fear increases untreated depression, untreated anxiety, increases blood pressure, which means you can have blood pressure because of fear. can go deeper into medical the cause of fear into the effect of it in your body and when we see no I just have a blood pressure doctor says I must start my chronic medication <laughs> you, you don't know what's going on with you nobody in your family has blood pressure you are the first one to create a generation of diabetic and blood pressure that should never say get a rid of this thing And just because someone in your family have it, it does not mean you must have it. That you never say, I'm happy they can keep it. I, I, it's okay, they can keep it. It's not for me, they can keep it. Fear has a lot of effects. A lot of effects. I cannot finish them. 
But one of the things that God says to me is that the reason why the enemy uses a fear as one of his most powerful weapons is because in the presence of fear, you are disarmed. The purpose of fear is to disarm you of your own equipments. Fear is so powerful that it makes you forget that you have a key to the problem. Fear can make you stand behind the closed door with a key in your pocket. And you forgot that there is keys in your pocket because you are afraid of what inside the door. Now you forgot that you have the keys to open. That you never said, deal with this thing now. You got to know that the reason why the enemy uses fear, especially in the church, is to disarm you. When you are disarmed, because your greatest weapon as the believer is the faith and prayer. Your greatest weapons as a believer is the faith and what? And prayer. Fear for people do not pray. Fear for people do not pray. Fearful people cannot pray. They don't pray. And when you cannot pray, he end up taking control over you. He end up making the situation worse. Then as I was reading, I also discovered that fear brings stagnation. Fear brings stagnation. I don't know why I'm not progressing. I don't know why I'm not moving forward. You don't know why? Now you know. It's fear. Deal with fear and then you move forward. Fear brings stagnation. Stagnation brings delays the destiny. Delays destiny means delayed dreams. Delayed dreams means unaccomplished purpose of God over our lives. So we have to deal with fear. Touch your neighbor say, please deal with fear. Deal with this. You are courageous. You are victorious. You are strong. You are powerful. You, you, are, you are more than a conqueror. You can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. Ah, but you got to know what you are dealing with. Deal with fear if you need to move to your next level. Look at whatever that is giving you torment, that gives you anxiety, that gives you headaches. And let it know that I know you now and I'm going to deal with you. I'm going to get you out of my life. I'm going to get you out of my marriage. I'm going to get you out of my kids. I'm going to get you out of my career because I'm not stopping here. I am going further. I can do this with God by my side. All things are you have to know it in order for you to deal with give me a second touch anybody say he's coming just, 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 just give me a second let me get this together then minister Lindo I also discovered that fear can be genetic fear can be inherited through family lineages it, we call it a clonic spirit. It's a stronghold. I wish I can say it in Kosa. I wish I can say it in Kosa here. It's a stronghold. When you say it in Kosa, it makes more sense. It's a spirit that comes and became permanent resident in a home like an owner. Nobody gets married in your, in your marriage, in your family, because nobody gets married. Every time you attempt marriage, fear of what if comes upon you and you pull back because it has something that's running through the family. That your neighbor said, can you deal with this thing please? You can be my girlfriend for 40 years, but I cannot marry you because I'm afraid of committing myself to you. I'm happy you being my girlfriend, but I don't understand why you can't be my husband. That you never said deal with that thing. If, have you, there are relationships. Every time you mention marriage, that devil becomes awakened. Why marriage now? Are we not fine? I thought we were okay. 
I thought you were fine. It's, touch your neighbor say, if you know what you're dealing with, you can get rid of it. If you don't know it, it will get rid of you. Have, I don't understand. I have a car, you have a car, we are successful. Why can't we get married? Every time we mention it, your face change. Go back in the family and check. Nobody got married because there is a spirit that became a resident that does not allow them to commit to anything. They can only commit. I'm on my father's altar, must be here for. This, this is my father's altar. We can be together, but we can't get married. I don't touch anybody. I don't understand your equation. Hell, I don't know where that comes from. And you know what? God says to me, I know you're talking to somebody. If the somebody's not in the room, he's online watching. And whoever you are, I don't know where you're sitting right now, but if you don't get rid of it, it will delay God's plan and purpose and desire for your life, for your careers, for your destiny. You are 40 years, every time they bring a marriage topic, you pull out. You are 28 years and you are 30 years, you are a man. Every time they mention a marriage, you pull out. You don't want to talk about it. Because the enemy, can I talk to somebody in the room? Can I talk to somebody in the room? David said that though I walk through the valleys and the shadows of death, I will fear no evil. Because David is saying to me, I see the reason to fear is here. He can pinpoint why he should be afraid. He can see why he should be afraid. But he said, I will not fear because thou act with me, O oh Lord. You need to understand that fear will give you reasons not to do it. Fear gives you Listen, the fear is very powerful because fear gives you reasons why you shouldn't move forward. Did you guys know that? Minister, I think I must read the scriptures. Maybe to, I should maybe go to my notes so I can start quoting scriptures, but I don't think it will help me here now because fear gives you reasons to why you should not move forward. If I go to school, how will I pay school fees? If I go to school, how will I raise the kids? You see, fear gives you answers to your stagnation. Fear gives you a reason to your problem. Fear. Fear will make a man not allow his wife to learn how to drive. Because he's afraid that he won't control her way about. Why do you want to drive? Don't I take you everywhere you want to go? Don't I go with you where you want to go? If I'm talking, can somebody shout a bigger man here? Can I talk to somebody in the house of God? Fear will make you not approach a woman or a man because of their status. I don't want her to reject me. I don't want her to reject me. What if she rejected me? How will I rise from this? Now you can't approach her. You can't approach her because you think she has more money and you are broke. We all were broke. Oh. Most of us were broke. We made a decision to marry them. Knowing that we were broke. I know I can feel it from the sole of my feet that I'm talking to somebody. 
Fear will make you not approach a man or a woman of status. Even though God has destined for both of you to be together. Fear will make you pull out of what God is putting together. Fear will make you pull out of something that God is putting together. Because he's a strategist. He's a visionary. He's an architect. He has a plan. If he start it, he knows how to finish it. If he finish it, he knows how to begin another one. Why are you pulling out of something that God has purpose to be? Can I go deeper here? I also discovered that fear will not allow you to try again. Because fear reminds you of your past wounds. Even though they were treated and healed, it reminds you of your past wounds. It reminds you of your past wounds. Every time a man approach, the first one let me down. I can't do this, I'm sorry. Because when you see a man, you see your past problems in all of us. All of us. We are a victim of one man, all of us. One man made all of us the same. All men are the same. There's no, it's no. It's, let's correct that statement. We are all not the same. That is the fear speaking in you. It is not carefulness. It is not consciousness. Because if it was, it would have been a spirit of sound mind. But this speaking is not the spirit of sound mind. Which God has given to you and me. So if, if it's not fear, let it be sound mind speaking. If it's not fear, let it be the spirit of what? Sound mind. Sound mind. So that if you speak to anybody, they can be like, I agree with you totally. You are moving the right decision. Who said you have to marry a man that is rich as you? Or that is on status as you? When I married my wife, was I not sleeping on the floor in church? I was sleeping on the floor. In church, on the floor. Listen, not on a bed. On the floor. Floor. Somebody say floor. floor. In church, we put over a mat and a pillow. You sleep. She saw a husband on the floor. She saw a manager on the floor. She saw a father on the floor. But when are you looking for a millionaire? That's your neighbor say, get rid of here. We were on the floor, men of God. But today we are starting companies. But today we are dreaming houses. But today we are dreaming millionaires. That you never say you can turn him into anything if God meant it to be. are looking at me, I'm afraid of coming down to you. I don't trust you. <laughs> the way they are looking at me, this side, let me come this side. Let me come this side. Because that side, the way they are looking. <laughs> Hallelujah. Touch your neighbor say, now we are doing church here. God has not given us the spirit. So we need to know what we are dealing with. We need to know that this spirit can delay your dreams. This spirit can delay your goals. It can what you are doing in your 40 years, you were supposed to do it in your 30 years. Now what you are supposed to be doing in your 40, you are doing it in your 50s because the devil have taken a decade because of fear. If you don't deal with fear, you will not move far in life. You will sit and wait for others to pass. But God's 
says, I want you to know that I did not give you fear. It did not come from me. I didn't give it to you. So you must send it back to whoever gave it to you. Oh. He said, I didn't give you that. This thing that you cannot do it, I didn't give it to you. Because in my mind, I've given you the power to do it. In my mind, I've given you the love to do it. In my mind, I've given you the spirit to do it. This thing that you can't start a business, I don't know where you're getting it from because I did not give you that. I gave you the sound mind so you can start a business. This thing that you can't do the master's degree, I don't know where you got it from because I gave you the spirit of power. Ah, 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 this thing that you can't marry me or I can't marry you, I don't know where you got it from because I did not give it to you. And if God did not give it to me, that I'm not going to keep it. I'm going to send it back to whoever sent it to me. And I said, devil, it's okay. Thank you for some time. We were in business, but I'm now out of business with you. I am taking on power. I am taking on love. I am taking on sound mind. I'm going to dream again. The devil is a liar. I will not be depressed another night. The devil is a liar. I'm not going to be anxious another day. I'm going to send it back to the... 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 Seek a light. Can I talk to somebody? Lies on your feet and say, devil, you can have it back. I'm going to buy that car. You can have it back. I'm going to buy that house. You can have it back. I'm going to get married. You can have it back. I'm going to be healed again. That you never say, send it back. this thing together here. Let me put this thing together. The problem is man of God, Israel is in the desert place and he's surrounded by many nations. He's in a place of isolation, place of defeat, is in a place. God spoke to me about Canaan, the country of milk and honey. His promises are yes and amen. His promises are clear. But because he didn't speak to me about the enemies, you see, God is God. He spoke to you about the promised land. But now you are surrounded by enemies in the desert place. Because what the enemy wants, he wants you to see the reality of your situation. He wants to isolate you and tell you that you can't do it. You need to change where you are going. The purpose of isolation is not only to delay destination, but it is with the intention to divert you from your destination. Because he knows when you reach to the promised land, when you reach to the country of milk and honey, he won't be able to control you anymore. Your joy will be too great. Your testimony will be too powerful. Your giving will be too heavy. Your tithe will be too big. Let me delay her. 
let me see if I can shift, if I can change their destiny. And because God, when I came to seek it, you taught me that you're gonna use me. But now that I'm there, I don't understand what is going on here. And it doesn't make sense to me. You told me that when I get there, my breakthrough will come forth like the light of the dawn. Now I don't understand what is going on in here. And now they are in a desert place, in a place of isolation, in a place where their dreams have been shadowed. And even though they are dreaming, but fear surpasses all their dreams. Even though they are visionary, they are vision for their kids and their husbands and wives. It seems to be shattered by the desert place. And the desert is not a destination. It is a place to go through. Now that I'm going through what I'm supposed to go through have become my permanent address. I'm supposed to go through the desert. But somehow, year after year, I'm still on the same spot. My house still have the same color paint. There is no indication that breakthrough is coming in my life. The chairs are still in the same position. For five years, I have not done anything because I'm in a place where dreams and fear have met. And the Bible says, when they were in Babylon, they kept their instruments. And it says, we cannot serve God in this situation. And they forgot that their price was their breakthrough. They forgot that their worship was their breakthrough. Because when they worship him, he comes down. And when he comes down, he comes with the answers to our problem. So we're not doing what we were supposed to do to get us out of trouble. And instead, we are making excuse. I can't buy a car. Why are you talking about a car without the learners, by the way? Excuse me. Don't you need the license before you think about a car? Why would I give you a car if you don't have a license in the first place? I can't go to school because I have no school fees. Have you even registered to see if you can't pay school fees? So the enemy keeps you in a place of impossibilities and takes away the possibilities. He gives you in a place of what? Impossibilities. And it shifts me and you away from possibilities. Because when, if you have a mind of possibilities, when one door closes, another door opens. Can I talk to somebody here? The Bible says that the sea of Zebedee, the sons uh, of Peter and his brothers, they are fishing. They are professional fishermen. They are skilled fishermen. Can I talk to somebody else in the room? If you're not here, they are watching me. It's okay. They've been fishing their whole career. And they realize that it's not working because we've tried everything we can and it's not working now the Bible says 
Jesus alive with the way. And he says, Peter, throw your nets one more time. The question is, are you even willing? Do you have the energy, the tenacity, the ability, the force, the power to throw in your everything into your dream, into your career, into your vision, into your marriage one more time? Is there even one more time left for you and me? Is there even one more time that is left in? And Peter says, Jesus, listen to me very carefully here. I know you are the Lord, the son of the living God. Listen to me, Jesus. I know you are the Lord, the most high God. I've been fishing all night. Do you see why I'm naked? Do you see why I'm half naked, Jesus? Can you see my paint is torn? These are my wounds from my previous trial. When I tried, it didn't work. Peter was very clever. He says, it didn't work. And you can see I'm naked. You can see, look at me. You can, you can see me, Jesus. Look, look, I'm, I'm still waiting. I'm still even, I'm not completely healed from my previous marriage. Can you see that? I'm still wounded here. But because... Because you have said it now. Because you have said it. Okay, it's fine. I'm not going to do it based on how I'm feeling anymore. I'm not going to do it based on my previous mistakes. I'm not going to do it based on my previous pain. I'm not going to do it based on my previous disappointment. I feel like preaching. I'm not going to do it based on who said no to me yesterday. I'm not going to do it because they turned me down with my CV last month. I'm not going to apply for this loan one more time because the bank said I don't have enough credits. Now I'm going to go mad. I'm going to do it because Jesus has said so. I'm going to do it because Jesus have said so. That you never said now listen to me. God is saying to you that he did not give you the spirit of fear. He did not give you the spirit of failure. He did not give you the spirit of mistakes. He did not give you the spirit of losers. He did not give you the spirit of weakness. He did not give you the spirit of trying. He said I the Lord. He said I the Lord your God I have given you the spirit of power I have given you the spirit of power I have given you the spirit of power but the power and the fear cannot work together you need to take one and get rid of the other that you never say never take a fear out and take a power in get rid of fear and take power because power will get you to where you want to go touch two people say get rid of it get rid of it get rid of it get rid of this fear who said you can't make it who said you cannot do it when God is with me who can be against me when God is for us who can be he that is in me is greater than he that is in and in Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 he says I am the Lord your God I'm not a meek mouse I'm the Lord your God I'm not a Sangoma I am the Lord your God I'm not Ibrahim I'm the Lord your God I'm not your ancestral fathers. I am your Lord, your God. Somebody shout my God. Somebody shout my God. He said, I am the Lord, your God. Somebody shout my God. 
He said, I am the Lord your God. Because this is the enemy you see today. You shall see them no more. The problems you have today, you will have them no more. The troubles you've been going through today, you will go through it no more. The pain you went through, you will go through it no more. Because I am the Lord your God. 32 people and say, He is my God. He is my shield. He is my rock. He is my refuge. He is my comforter. He is my redeemer. He is my healer. He is my restorer. He is my maker. He is my breakthrough. He is my victory. He is my peace. He is my joy. He is my mercy. He is my courage. He says, I will uphold you. I will lift you up. I will lift you up. And I will make your dreams come to pass. I will give you strength to bring it to pass. That you never say receive strength. Hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. He said, I will make it to pass. I will protect you with my righteous hands. No weapon from the against you shall be able to prosper. Weapons will be formed. Weapons are formed. But I, the Lord, I will not allow them to prosper over you because my righteous hand will be upon you. Yeah, Lord, let your righteous hand be upon my generation. Let your righteous hand be upon my career. Let your righteous hand be upon my business. Let your I am your Lord. He said, I am the Lord. I will make it to pass. I know fear comes first, but I'm here to tell you, receive courage, receive courage. Somebody shout, he's my Lord. I cannot hear you. I cannot hear you, church. Can you give him some praise if he is your Lord? said I am your Lord I will uphold you I will guide you I will walk with you fear not fear not you can dream you can get married you are a man enough to do it the devil is a liar you are the Lord chosen he have chosen you he have anointed you he have appointed you he have set you apart I know you while you were still in your mother's womb I trust you. I set you apart. I know your troubles. I know your pain. I know your mistakes. But I am your God. Yes. 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 He's my God. Yes. He's my peace. Yes. He's my joy. Yes. He's my comforter. Yes. He's my protector, yes. He's my breakthrough, yes. He's my healer, yes. He's my everything. Wherever you are watching from, wherever you are following from, He is your redeemer. He is your healer. He is your restorer. He is your maker. He is your joy. He is your peace. He's your comfort. He's your protector. He's your supplier. He knows the way in. He knows the way out. He knows. He knows. He knows. Say, Timothy. Timothy. Get ready. He says, Timothy, please. He says, Timothy.
Timothy, get rid of fear. Recently, about three weeks ago, I found my place filled with fear. How do you know? Because fear changes your surroundings. It changes your emotions. It changes how you feel. Suddenly you are bitter. Suddenly you are moody. You don't know why. You, nobody said anything wrong to you. I find myself in the place like that. And I sat in my car and I played worship songs. I said, Lord, this storm, this is not my position. Because fear wants to isolate me. And if I'm isolated and he disarms me of my fighting weapons, then I can't fight. And if I cannot fight, defeat is guaranteed. At least, let it be an equal fight. Don't disarm me to knock me down. Devil, if you want a fight with me, come when my prayer garment is on. If you want a fight, if you want a fight, don't knock me out and take my weapons. Come to me when my faith and my prayer life is on. Then let fight men to men. Let's make it a fair fight. Let it not be a one-sided fight. But from today, Now I know, I can't see you, but I know you. I can't see you, but I know, you understand? I can't see you, but I know your results. I know your tactics. You want me to forget that I'm gifted. You want to kill my gift. My gift brings me purpose. And purpose makes me complete before him. Am I talking to somebody? My gift. Touch your neighbor please and say, my gift gives me purpose. In this house, worshiping on this altar gives me purpose. Shutting it gives me purpose. If you take this away, you are taking my purpose. And if my purpose is taken, I'm no longer useful before Him. This is my sacrifice. I cannot preach to somebody in the room because I don't have a lot of money to give Him. To serve in his presence gives me purpose. <laughs> this is my worship. This is my worship. Say, oh, come now. <laughs> because if he take it away, if he can take that away from me, then I have no purpose. But my purpose is coming back. This is all of my words. It's got to come back. Receive my words. It's got to come back. All of my words. Receive my that's what he is after is that which you saying he alone must receive he alone must receive that's what he is after but guess what we will sing hallelujah until we will sing hallelujah until you come again. Look at 
Oh, we will sing hallelujah until we Look at your other neighbor, please we come on stage. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Me and you together. Me and you together. We will sing hallelujah. You can't take that away. You mustn't take that away. We will sing. in his presence and you are standing like a robot in, 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 in for Trekker Road now. We will, I want to see somebody moving like this. Bend, come to me. You got to dance. You better dance. You better dance. You better dance. You better dance. Come on, church. I told the Lord you better dance. To Jesus, dance in your presence, dance in his presence. Let me tell you what that means. You are saying, Fear, you are here, but I'm choosing not to be afraid. And instead, I am dancing in his presence and your presence. I'm choosing not to cry, but I'm worshiping him while you are here. Dance in your presence, 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 dance in your presence. Is anybody who can give me a hand of praise and lift him higher and let the burden be lifted over your life? Lift him up, somebody. If you don't mind, would you lift up your hands with me? And say, Fear. Say, Fear. I can't hear you. Say, Fear. Fear. I denounce you. I demand you. I denounce you. I denounce you. Paralyzed. I in my life, in my life, in my family, in my family, in my career, in my, career, in, my career, in my business, in my, business, in my, dreams, in my dreams, in my gifts. In my gifts. Today, today, I pronounce you I pronounce paralyzed, 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 disabled, dis dysfunctional, 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 useless, 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 in my life, in my life, in the name of Jesus. Clap your hands and kick him out. Clap your hands. Let him loose. Let him loose. Let him, loose. Let him out. Let him out. Pronounce him out. Pronounce him out. In the name of Jesus. Over your kids. Over your marriage. Over your wife. Over your husband. Denounce fear. Denounce it. Paralyze it. Disarm it. Disarm it. We disarm you. We lose you. We bind you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. you come from whatever your origin however you got here I command you to go back in the name of Jesus because my dreams are life my desires are life my dreams will come to pass my purpose will be reborn again I am going to frame my gifts I'm going to frame my gift in the house of the Lord somebody shout yes, yes. shout yes yes Shout yes. Yes. And 
God said to me, son, if the church can be away, that the biggest weapon of the enemy is fear. And fear opens the door to many failures in life. Then the church will rise. This is our rising season. It's our rising hour in this house. I choose not to dwell in my yesterday. Bring it on today. What God has for me. For I know the plans that I have for you. To give you peace. Not to harm you. To give you prosperity. So from today, walk victorious. Speak victorious. Because you have not been given the spirit of fear. You are given the spirit of power. Can you touch four people and they say, I am armed with power? Four people. Tell them that you are armed with power. I'm not armed with fear. I am armed with power, love, and a sound mind. Clap your hands for Jesus one more time.